Hello everybody. Um, today in this video, I'm going to talk about one uh, very nice feature that MATLAB can do, which is uh, dealing with polynomial operations. But before we uh, talk about MATLAB, let's go and uh, revise quickly um, the main operations that we uh, do with the polynomials. So um, the, the polynomial is uh, just one kind of mathematical equation so that has the general formula of sigma a n x bar n. Um, so it's uh, constant uh, multiplied uh, plus constant multiplied by, multiplied by x power one, then x power two, then x power three, and so on and so forth. So it can go to hundred terms, thousand terms. It doesn't matter as soon as, as long as the constants uh, or the coefficients are constants and the powers are um, uh, integers. Okay. Um, so the the operation that we usually use for uh, polynomial functions is the addition and subtraction. It's pretty simple for addition and subtraction. Uh, you just uh, look for the uh, the uh, uh, x that has the same power and just you add the the coefficients. So in this case, you have f of x and g of x. Uh, there is x power five, x power four, x power three just in f of x. So in addition and subtraction and subtraction, it do doesn't matter. These three terms would not be affected because there is no corresponding terms in G. Uh, the, the difference will appear here when you add 2 plus 3 will be 5, and then 1 plus 4 will be 5, and then negative 10 plus 3 equals negative 7. And the same in subtraction, you will have 2 minus 4, which is going to be, uh, I mean, 2 minus 3, it's going to be negative 1. 1 minus 4, negative 3. Negative 10 minus 3, it's negative 13. So it's pretty simple and straightforward, and you can you can simply do it by, by hand. It doesn't need a software to do this. It gets more difficult when you go to multiplication because when you do multiplication, you actually um, multiply the two uh, functions and you multiply each one of the terms here with all the terms in the other function. So you'll start with multiplying of um, 4x power 5 with uh, 3x power 2 and then with 4x and then with 3. And then you go do the same thing with 3x power 4. So, and you do this for all the terms. So the number of terms you will get is actually, uh, if you have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms, and you have 3 terms, then you will end up with uh, 18 terms. These 18 terms will be, as you see here, it's, of course it's not all the terms here, but you will have many terms that have a common uh, x uh, power. So you have here 16x per 6 and then 9x per 6. You'll have here 12x per 5 and 12x per 5. So so these 18 terms will will uh, be uh, uh, grouped into, into uh, terms with the same uh, power. And then you should end up with uh, highest power of x per 7, which will be the highest power here multiplied by the highest power here, which is 12x per 7. And then you will have x power 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Then you should have eight terms when you do the multiplication, which are these terms, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. So it's, it's kind of tedious and a long process, uh, and but still it, 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 it's doable. Um, it gets more difficult when you go to division because when you do division by doing the long division, like what you used to do in, <clears throat> in elementary school and uh, middle school. Um, in this case, you look for the uh, parameter that you multiplied by this to get this, which should be 4 over 3 multiplied by x power 3. And then you multiply this with all the terms here, um, and then you get the, the difference, and then you do the same thing with another term and another term and so on and so forth. And at the end, in, in, in almost um, or in most of the cases, you will get some remainder here. So the product of the division is actually what we call the quotient and the remainder. So you have two products, actually, not just, just only one product. <clears throat> and it's it's a, a very, very tedious process, actually. Uh, one other thing we are interested in is integration and division, and integration uh, and differentiation. And these two uh, uh, operations are not very difficult with the, uh, with the uh, polynomial uh, equations, because in this case, you just add one to the power when you do integration and then divide by the new power, or um, multiply the power with the coefficient and um, remove one from that power. So in, in, in case of differentiation, you'll have 20, 5 by 4, 20, x power 4, and then 4 by 3 is 12, x power 3, and it's, it's pretty simple. And for the, the uh, integration, you will have uh, 4, and then uh, add, add to the power 1, it's x power 6, and divide by 6, it's going, going to be 4 over 6, x power 6, 3 over 5, x power 5, and, and so on. And then you'll have this constant here, and in case you know this constant, you can put it as a number. Uh, if you know. 
So these are the main operations that we are interested in, uh, and let's see how we can deal with them in MATLAB. Uh, when we deal with them in MATLAB, the first thing to keep in mind is that we need to know how to uh, define the polynomial to MATLAB. Uh, so in order to define a polynomial to MATLAB, you have to understand how you understand it. We know that MATLAB understands the polynomial. I'll, I'll just keep them side by side so we can see what we want to do. Um, uh, so to define polynomials to MATLAB, you just need to understand that MATLAB sees polynomials as matrices. Uh, so for instance, we have something like this here. It's uh, 4x power 5, 3x power 4, 6 for x power 3, 2x power 2, 1x minus 10. So what we put to define this polynomial f is um, um, the uh, coefficients. So to put the coefficients, you put 4. 3, 6, 2, 1, negative 10. So let me understand this as a polynomial, as, as a matrix. But when we, we use this matrix in polynomial operations, it will be understood as this. To define G, uh, it will be 3, 4, 3. Okay? Um, and of course, this is a matrix. So now these two are defined as matrices to MATLAB when I am going to use them as matrices. Uh, so let's see the first thing we did was addition. So to, to do the addition, addition would be simple addition of matrices. So you have to keep in mind that these two matrices cannot be uh, added together because, uh, oops, I, I did a mistake. Um, uh, these two matrices cannot be added because they don't have the same dimensions. So to do this, you have to make sure that the dimensions are the same. So I will define another G, which is 0, 0, 0 and G. Okay, so if now this g is 1 by 6 as the other, uh, as f is 1 by, by 6. So now I can add f and g, and you can see here it's 4, 3, 6, 5, 5, negative 7. You can do the um, subtraction. It's exactly here. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, and and as, we, uh, as I told you, it's a matrix operation. It's, it's not a polynomial operation. It, it gives the same thing, but it's for MATLAB, it's a matrix operation. Um, now let's go to the multiplication. The multiplication is called sometimes for polynomials as convolution. So to, to do the multiplication, um, uh, you have to say that it is convolute. It's con, which stands for convolution. And then he says, uh, what is the two or what are the two functions that you want to multiply? So I'll, I'll multiply f and g. And then you have 12, 25, 42, 39, 29, negative 20, negative 37, and negative 30. Okay, so um, it's it's pretty simple. You see how much time you spend to do this and how much time you spend to do this. Of course, I can do this with the G that has the, the zeros, but it will give me three zeros here, uh, which are actually from the multiplication of the zeros with the other function. Uh, but it doesn't make any sense to do it, actually. I, I personally do not do this. Uh, so I would do the uh, multiplication without the zeros. Um, so the conv does the multiplication. To do the division, it is the deconvolution. So I will deconv, I will type deconv, and then put the uh, first function, which is f, uh, div divided by the second function, which is the g. <coughs> And this is what we did here. It is what, 4 over 3, and then negative. this is negative 7 over 9, and then one, uh, 46 over 27. So it's the same results <coughs> that we got from the uh, division. But we, we said that we'll have two outputs from here, and, and, and we have only one output here. And this is because I didn't ask him for two outputs. To ask him for two outputs, you, you have to mention it explicitly that you want the quotient and the remainder. Um, and this is uh, what we have as a, as a quotient, the same what we got from the previous uh, order or the previous uh, command. And then you have these two, which are the remainder, which is negative 65 over 81 and negative 103 over 27. So uh, it's, it's a, again, it's pretty simple. Uh, you just did this uh, pretty simple. Uh, one could think that we can do the same uh, operation with the G uh, that has the zeros, but then it's, it's not going to be uh, possible. You have to be non-zero uh, coefficient, or the first coefficient must be non-zero. Okay, so this this uh, g, uh, what I have here, shouldn't have any zeros in the first. Uh, 
Um, and here comes a point that it's very important I didn't mention in the beginning. Uh, let's say I have uh, a function like uh, this, for instance, and instead of having this uh, 6x43, I don't have this term. In case, in case f doesn't have this term, I call it h, for instance. <coughs> Okay, so the, the function uh, h of x uh, has this form that we see here, and I want to define this. So I, 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 I'm going to define it by 4, x power 5, 3, x power 4. It's, it's very, very important to make sure that every x uh, has its coefficient put there. So you have to put 0 here to stand for 0 or the coefficient of x power 3, and then 2, 1 and negative 10. It's, it's, it's very critical because if you if you forget this, MATLAB will understand this as coefficient of x power 0, x power 1, x power 2. This will be x power 3 and x power 4. So it's going to be a totally different function than the one that you are looking for. Okay? Um, so it's, it's a very important point that you need to keep in mind. Uh, so we talked about the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and now let's see the integration and differentiation. Integration and differentiation are very, very simple. Um, uh, to do the integration of f, so I'll, I'll, I'll just and uh, yeah, it, it's already here. So I'll, I need to get the derivative of h. So I am gonna do poly there, which is the derivative of the polynomial. Uh, this polynomial is gonna be f, uh, and this is what we got: 12, 20, uh, 20 12, 18, 4, 1. Uh, you can get the the second derivative by poly there of the uh, poly there of the function so get the second derivative you can do this and get the third derivative it's 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 gonna be pretty simple you can get the fourth derivative whatever the derivative that you're interested in you can get um, you can do the integration the same way um, but instead of poly there i will say poly int which is the integration you can do integration one more time uh, or, or the second integral uh, and here you go. It's, it's it's pretty pretty simple. But you'll see here that for the poly int, you found that it is has this zero, which stands for this constant that we mentioned before. To to put this value, if you if you know it, you can ju just put it as a value. I'll put hundred, so it it is hundred. You, you here don't put initial condition or something. You just put the value of the constant that you want to be put in instead of this c. Um, so we now know how to get the integration and the differentiation of a function. One cool thing also that we are interested in is the evaluation of the function. Uh, to do the evaluation, it's going to be the same thing, poly and then val, which stands for the evaluation, and then put the function f, and then put the value that you want to put. It is 1, for instance. So it tells you that the function equals 6 when you put x equals 1. Now you can, you can check it's 4, 3. Uh, 4 plus 3 is uh, 7, plus 6, 13, uh, plus uh, 3, 16, minus 10 equals 6. So it's uh, it's pretty simple. You can do the evaluation at more than one value. So 1, 2, 3 gives you the values at three values. You can put it for uh, a range of numbers, so 1 to 10, to give you at 1, 2, 3, 4, on, until you reach the value. So you, so you see here, it's, it's, it's very magnificent. You did 10 evaluations in a click of a mouse. You can do 100 uh, at, at a click of a mouse. It is uh, very, very, very uh, amazing. It's amazing. You, 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 you can imagine how much time you will spend to do this, and it's, it's done in a split of a second. Um, so uh, this is for the evaluation. You can, you can combine stuff now. So you can say, I want to get the poly uh, val of the poly there of the function f at x or at x equals 1 for instance so it tells you it's 55 uh, it's pretty cool you can do whatever thing that you want uh, so instead of doing this in two steps you can do this in one single step as uh, the last thing that we 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 are interested in also is getting the roots i didn't mention it here but to get the roots of a function we know to how to get the roots of the second order polynomial if it's uh, just this uh, uh, if it is just this, we know how to get the roots. Um, putting two brackets or getting the formula of negative b plus or minus root b square minus 4 ac uh, over 2a. Uh, but if you have something large like this, you know it has five roots, but you don't know how to get them. Um, MATLAB can do this very simply using the function roots. And here it gives you the five roots. Pretty, pretty simple and pretty straightforward. 
we will see in the future how to get proofs of any function, but this is uh, very specific for the polynomial equations, and it's it's way easier because in many cases we can just get one root and not all the roots. So this saves a lot of time. And you see here it gives you some imaginary roots. This uh, four have imaginary parts, and these imaginary parts might not have any meaning. And and this uh, this is a very important point that uh, when you solve your equation. Maybe for, for the physics of the problem, it, it has to be uh, a high order polynomial function. But actually, uh, being a fifth order polynomial doesn't mean that it has five uh, physically or, or, or five roots have physical meaning. You might have one like this one that has a physical meaning, and the others are mathematical roots that, that do not have any physical meaning in the real life. Uh, so it's it's important to keep in mind that you 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 have. Uh, uh, some understanding of the background of the equation that you're solving so that you can um, tell which function or which root is the one that you're looking for. But for from a mathematical point of view, it can do it very, very simply and quickly without uh, any effort. Uh, so this is all for the polynomial operations now, and I'll see you in the next meeting. Goodbye.